Throughout every gambit of motorsports, some of the most widely remembered stories are the ones of the worst teams. Formula One has had quite a few of them, from Andrea Moda, the team run by an Italian shoe magnate who spent most of the year trying to kill off one of its drivers, to the Mackey engineering team who never qualified for a Grand Prix thanks to the fact that most of the staff didn't speak a word of English. In the world of IndyCar, there's been some pretty bad teams as well, but as far as I'm concerned, there's one that stands above the rest in all the wrong ways. From pretty lackluster results on track, to being fanned by the single worst human being ever to graze the IndyCar paddock, this is a story of the worst IndyCar team. The team in question is called Racing Professionals, and it was founded by at the time seven-time Indy Racing League starter John Earp in 2002. To this point, Earp's career had been pretty bad. He was a fixture in Arca starting in the late 90s where his career results fell flat. Starting in 2000, Earp switched his attention to the IRL. His first star in the series came for Bird McCormick Racing at the season opener in 2000. Ever since then, things had gone downhill. He drove for TriStar Motorsports in the beginning of 2001, but after a string of three DNFs in a row, in a practice crash in Texas, the team replaced him with Jared Schrader. The biggest highlight of John Erb's prior seven starts in the series was a ninth place run at the 2001 season finale in Texas, which would turn out to be his best ever IndyCar finish. For the 2002 season, with no drive lined up in either ARCA or the Indy Racing League, Erb formed the Racing Professionals team to give him a guaranteed ride in 02. As I said in my nearly two-year-old video going over this man's career, Racing Professionals were pretty amateurish, and you're about to find out why. The misery kicked off at the first race of the 2002 IRL season in Homestead, Miami. It was here where a practice crash forced a withdrawal and a non-start at the season opener, setting the tone for the year ahead. However, two weeks later in Phoenix, Herb had his best race of the year. Qualifying for the race in 24th and eventually finishing 11th, Herb achieved his second best result in his career. Now, it should be noted that only 12 cars finished the race, taking the luster off of the results, but he gotta take the positives out of things in life, even if said thing has been gutted by scrap metal hunters. The next race in Fontaine was unremarkable on paper, with Herb finishing 19th from a 24th place start. But what made this race remarkable comes from a bit of hindsight. Herb would attempt nine more races after Fontana in 2002, these ranging from the next race of the O2 season in Nazareth, all the way through to Michigan in 2007, where Herb would never see the checkered flag again. From pretty much every conceivable measure, it's all downhill from here. Nazareth was probably the most infamous on-track moment in John Herb's racing career, as after starting 23rd and crashing 90 laps into the race, Herb's car would spear across the track with its front wing tucked under the front of the car. The bizarre accident, featured in an episode of Frisky Nixon's WTF Moments in IndyCar series, is how I myself was greeted to John Herb. It was a somewhat iconic moment, and that's about all Nazareth had to offer. After this, he would fail to qualify for the Indy 500, which while still pretty terrible, wasn't the worst thing in the world considering the abundance of non-IRL teams in the race. The rest of the year would be pretty atrocious. Shocker, I know. A last place start in Texas ended with handling issues, more than likely just Herb getting parked by race officials. Then it would be two crashes back-to-back -back in Pikes Peak and Richmond that ended Herb's season after only eight races, only six of which he had started. Herb finished the 2002 IndyCar season 31st in championship points, with an average start of 22.8, an average finish of 19th, four DNFs, one DNQ, one did not start, and zero top tens. Herb was by a pretty wide margin the worst driver from the 2002 season. Whether this be down to the equipment or the driving, I'll let you decide for yourselves. Racing professionals and John Herb left IndyCar after 2002, switching their attention to the Indy Pro Series starting in 04. The Infinity Pro Series, or as it was called later on the Indy Pro Series, is a series that after a few name changes in about 18 years, is now the Indy NXT Series, the feeder series to IndyCar. Side tangent real quick, to the people that gave me lip a couple months ago because they couldn't tell the difference between the Indy Pro Series from 2006 versus the modern day Indy Pro Series, have it be known that those two series, while they have the same name are totally different. Side tension out of the way, racing professionals and John Herb embarked on a somewhat fruitful time in the Indy Pro Series. Herb even scored a win in the 2005 season, along with having other good results too. I would go over Herb's time in the series a bit more, but not only would that make a good video in and of itself, this video is meant to be about the IndyCar side of things, and plus I wrote this part of the video at about 11 o'clock at night, which is quite late by my standards. So for now, let's get back on track and talk about the IndyCar side of things. 
John Herb returned to IndyCar competition starting in 2007. Technically, 2006 if you can't kind of failed venture at that year's Indy 500 with Playa del Racing, but we don't count that since he failed to qualify. Racing Professional's first attempt at an IndyCar race since Richmond 2002 came at the 2007 Indianapolis 500, and for the only time, the team entered two cars. John Herb drove the number 19 car, and Richie Hearn was in the number 91 car. Hearn's entry was in conjunction with Hemelgarn Racing, so it really just counts on technicality. Hearn and Herb had less than ideal month with Hearn starting 32nd and Herb starting 27th. Their races weren't ideal either, as John Herb crashed and Richie Hearn finished 37 laps down. Herb's next start won't come until Texas two races later, where Herb scored his best ever qualifying result of 14th. Unfortunately, that faint amount of promise won't convert to anything, as a lap 44 crash took him out of the race. Then finally came Michigan in 2007, Herb's last start in the series. It was a pretty terrible ending, as John Herb starred last and was classed in last after another early crash. Crash. In three races in 2007, John Herb crashed in every single one of them, so it's fair to say that at least from a results perspective, racing professionals was pretty hopeless in their time in the series. But while the results on track made John Herb an IndyCar reject to many, it's what he did outside the track that ruined his reputation the most. On October 4th, 2013, Collier Kenny police arrested John Herb after his wife found nude pictures of underage girls on his laptop, including pictures of Herb engaged in lewd activities with a four-year-old girl. On top of child molestation and possession of child pornography charges in Collier County, Herb was also investigated in Lee County, Florida for battery of an underage girl. On January 4th, 2016, John Herb played no contest to the charges. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison and began his sentence on January 18th of 2016. Herb is 53 years old currently, and the earliest he can be freed is 2037. Considering the justifiably violent treatment of child offenders in prison, the truly disgusting nature of the crimes he committed, and an idea proposed by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis which would make the death penalty an option for child offenders, it could be unlikely that Herb makes it out of prison alive. If he does, he'll be on a lifetime probation upon release. John Herb is a truly deplorable human being who, as far as I'm concerned, should have been dead and buried a very long time ago. I hope the victims and their families have found a way to deal with this unspeakable trauma inflicted on them. When it comes to looking over racing professionals, the results are really secondary. It's not the dreadful results on track that John Herb will be or should be remembered by. Instead, he'll be remembered as an awful human being who did horrific things to the most innocent people in society. 